Good morning. Happy Wednesday, I think we're on. Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Hope you all are having a beautiful day. And today, as I'm scrolling through my feeds, making sure I'm up to date on all my moves on Board Game Arena and everything else, I uh, wanted to talk about it's not necessarily controversial, but I feel like people are making it controversial. And let's talk about the Super Mario Brother movie trailer that dropped last week. Okay. So anyone who follows me on social media, um, my initial reaction was pointing out uh, Chris Pratt's voiceover, uh, I'll say. And... I think it caught a lot of people off guard. And and to to be fair and to call it right down the middle, um it, it's just it's it's something to get used to. It's not necessarily um it's not necessarily a change that's gonna come very openly and freely. Uh with that said it's it is different, and I, you know we're all we're all used to the original Mario voice. We we've, we've been used to it for decades. It's not something that's gonna go away, you know, anytime soon. But with that said, when they announced that they were going to like when they announced the cast for the movie, I should say, it's to be expected that we're gonna see some changes to the product. Like, I don't understand that. Like, they're casting Chris Pratt as Mario, so my first question to those people is, are you really that surprised? Do you really think they're gonna have Mario, or I should say, Chris Pratt as Mario try to feign a re like a very fake Italian accent in order to replicate the original, um, uh, voice of, the original voice of the character? No. And I, I knew that was going to be the case. You look at the cast list, you have Jack Black as Bowser, you have Seth Rogen as DK. Oh, uh, I'm not looking forward to that. Uh, Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong, and I swear to God, if they literally make this asshole, like, if they just put the voice on DK and he just... For, for two hours, it's just this, one of my favorite Nintendo characters is on screen, just, just sounding like a burnout stoner. I am, I, if I'm watching this in theaters, I will legit leave. If I have to listen to that annoying, that, uh, if I have to hear that annoying laughter come out of him once, I will leave. I'm sorry. No, I, I vehemently being against Seth Rogen being Donkey Kong. Um, if he does good, good for him. But I'm, I'm very much worried that it's going to be trash. So, it's... I'm trying to make sense of a lot of the out... You know, the outrage. It's like, they, they have this full cast of real actors voicing characters, and everyone's suddenly shocked that Mario doesn't sound like the original Mario. Okay, well, let's take a little bit of a deep dive into the trailer itself. What do we know? We know that this is likely Bowser's first encounter with that with with, with with the kingdom um I don't know if that's Princess Peach's um kingdom because it was all penguins and to my knowledge um with every Mario game I don't recall her kingdom being inhabited by penguins um so but Bowser said the line in the trailer like, he had the star, and he's like, and who's gonna stop me? And then you see Mario getting launched into the Mushroom Kingdom, and he's completely taken back by it. Like, this is his first time in the Mushroom Kingdom. Folks, we're getting an Origins movie. This is a... basically how everyone came to be. How the characters first got started. Like, he is not, like, the Mario the savior of the Mushroom Kingdom. He is still Mario just... Just Mario the Plumber. <coughs> and um, with that being said, I mean, there's a possibility that maybe it's like t the end of the movie, you might see like him develop some of his mannerisms. I mean, even even in like the send off line prep had right before it cut to like toward the end of the trailer, Mushroom Kingdom, here we come. That's not Mario. No, this is clearly someone who has been tasked to, to do something and he's in, you know, he's 
you know, trying to psych himself up to go out and, and save people. This is a guy who's literally just been thrust into a situation, and he's just going with it, trying to make the best of it, I guess. Like, it's it's a beginning tale. Um, we didn't get too much on it. I will say that the, the, um, the visuals itself, this thing looked gorgeous. This thing looked really, really good. It was beautifully made. Um, Jack Black as Bowser, I thought was really good. Um, it's a little different, you know, everyone, again, the voices are going to take some getting used to, but I think people need to understand that the last Super Mario Brother movie we got was widely recognized as so bad that you love it. And it's like, people now seem to want to gravitate toward that movie as it's somehow like, it's so good, it's good. And I'm like, no, it's, it's still in the category of it's so bad, it's good. Maybe even cult status, depending on how you define the term cult movie status. But it, no, the, the live action Mario movie, it was, no, no, it, it's not the gem you may think it is. I mean, I'll still watch it. I, I have a good time watching it, but there are just a lot of weird things about it I'm not a fan of. With that said, everyone upset at all this is ridiculous. Now, I will say that when, when, the, when Nintendo Direct was doing, right before the, uh, the trailer for the movie, um, they, they first announced that they are still working on... They're still working on voicing, and I, I think, I don't know if they said editing, but they definitely said they're still working on um, voice acting, which is a little concerning, because that means that this movie is, it's it's going to be, it's going to be a little while longer, if they're still working on it now, because people have known about this for over a year. Um, the other one is Chris Pratt, when he was doing his little, like, Zoom his little, his little Zoom, like, the little video he submitted, I don't know if it was, like, part of a Zoom call, or they were just like, hey, Chris, we're doing this direct, if you can just send us a little video of you talking about how excited you are with the project, Chris looked like he was lost, maybe even phoning it in a little bit, but if there's one thing I do know from following Chris Pratt is that he really is a genuine guy, and I'm sure he had a blast working on this, um, he might have been a little lost in the weeds during this little live segment, you know, talking about, oh, I, I love stomping me some, uh, and then, like, there was a pause, and he goes on to say in them, them, uh, them Koopas, and I'm just like, okay, okay. I'm like, I don't think you're near, I don't think he's nearly the gamer he's trying to make himself out to be, but it, it is kind of endearing that he's trying to, um, market himself to that, to that crowd, Jack Black, everyone knows, is a giant nerd. I mean, he he was very much... I'd say he was a little too much into his 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 Jack Black persona and his little and his live segment, but he he's someone who you know is gonna own the character he was given. When they announced him as Bowser, I'm like, that's a that's fantastic. Great job. So let's get into the whole like the big issue, and that is Pratt's voice with the character and, and then the outrage and why it's so misdirected. People are mad at Chris about this. Listen, I'm going to make a bold statement and any of you watching want to comment on it, feel free. A lot of people don't like Chris Pratt for the dumbest reasons. And I think the people who hate on the guy for those reasons are some of the most uh, uneducated morons there are. A lot of it is um, religious rebellion, I guess, whatever you want to call it. I'm not picking out people who are not of the faith, but I am noticing a trend that every single time Chris Pratt's name gets dragged in the middle of something, it's usually people of that nature that love to come out and smear the guy. Like, they were doing that with Thor Love and Thunder because people were... <laughs> All these articles coming out about how they were talking about how it was, you know, if it was the gayest movie ever, and Natalie Portman, who was kind of like adding to it by saying, oh, this definitely is, 
It's the gayest Marvel movie ever. And then people were just coming out in droves to attack Chris Pratt. And I'm like, why? Oh, oh, because he's openly Christian. That's, that's why. So that must mean he hates everyone on set. No, as it turns out, he is unanimously loved by his cast and crew. He's one of the few people who are, or not one of the few, but he was one of the many people who were petitioning to have James Gunn return back to Marvel so they can finish what they were doing. And considering all like the past that James Gunn had had on social media, and it's like, people just like to hate on the guy. I feel like he's an easy target. It's because, you know, he's, he's, he's kind of a dork. But, you know, a lot of people really like him, and he, he's openly, he openly discusses his faith and his beliefs to an extent. I'd say as much as Hollywood allows him to within an arm's reach. And I feel like that just makes him an easy target. Like, everyone coming after him about, the Thor, about Thor Love and Thunder. And I'm like, he was in the movie. If he was so vehemently against the, the supposed message of Thor being this hopeless that the whole idea of Thor being the gayest movie in the MCU, I'm like, if, if he was that much against it, don't you think he wouldn't have like signed on to do it? I'm sure they could have very easily have worked that around had he had not been there. So I feel like that's what this is. It's people mad at Pratt because I feel like he's such an easy target. He's not an aggressive person when it comes to social media. <coughs> He's not one of these check marks on Twitter that loves to go after people with dissenting opinions and attack them. No, he's a very soft-spoken, nerdy kind of guy who just happens to be very open about is his faith and and whatever, good for him and and good for whoever else if they choose if you know if they're not openly religious who just chooses to keep their personal ideals to themselves. Whatever, there are people across all political and religious spectrums or non-religious spectrums who just choose to keep a lot of their personal opinions and things to themselves. And that's cool. But I think that also kind of makes him, again, makes him a target. Because he's he's basically a giant pillow. And people will will take take the first shot at a pillow they can. But here's the fact of the matter. Chris did not walk into Nintendo Studios or whoever's, whoever the filming is. I don't know. He didn't just walk in and start voicing the character and they just look at him and say, that's Chris Pratt, we, we got, you know, let him do him. No, this was Nintendo. This was a decision by Nintendo. They told him, um, they told him that's what they wanted him to do. They could very easily said, go in there and feign an Italian accent. And you know what? Here, I'm willing to say this right now, too. I guarantee you, if he went in there and he tried pulling that, if he tried feigning an Italian accent, trying to sound like the Mario of old, I guarantee you, the response he would have gotten for that would have been far worse than the, what he is, what he was given now. Now, that's Nintendo. So get mad at Nintendo. I'm mad at Nintendo for casting Seth Rogen for for Donkey Kong. I thought that was a huge misstep, massive. In my opinion, Seth Rogen should have nothing to do with Nintendo at all. Let him stick with his with his own particular branch of humor, and let and and because honestly, I feel like he does a good job of alienating himself, and I don't want him anywhere near a character of mine. But that's just me personally. I don't like him. I don't like him how he carries himself. I don't like him on how he criticizes people who have who have criticisms of him, and maybe that makes me a bit of a hypocrite because. You know, I'm saying you shouldn't accept the criticism, but you're open to give it. But it just it's just this, it's this constant back and forth thing. But anyway, I digress. This is not about Seth Rogen. Again, if he does well, good for him. I'm just saying this whole outrage is is nonsense. It's it is what it is. People are like, oh, if you watch the, this this dub of this movie, he sounds like Mario. And I'm like, listen. If you really want to sit through a 90-minute, two-hour movie of him doing his It's Me, Mario, if you really want that, good for you. Me, personally, I know after playing countless hours of Mario Party, if I had to deal with that for more than 30 minutes, I'd probably want to reach over and punch the person in the seat next to me. In the arm, not the face. I'm not a monster. But... (laughs) 
<laughs> that's grading. So it's like, okay, okay, like it's it's a different take on it's a different take on the, on the thing. They're they're setting up what I would think is the beginning of a cinematic universe, and with everyone having <coughs> more realistic voices rather than just growls and like simple catchphrases. I, I think it adds a little bit more to the overall product. And I'm excited to see it. It looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun. And again, the trailer looks amazing. The voiceovers for Bowser was good. The animations were crisp. Everything looked so vibrant and beautiful. And when things needed to pop, they popped. Um, <laughs> I don't know who played Toad, but I'm like, I'm like, even Toad, it's like, he doesn't sound like that annoying Toad from, like, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. Oh, yeah, yeah. You you really want realism? You want that in your, your feature-length movie, Toad being Toad, with that voice? No, you don't. Um, even then, like, he even had a little... <coughs> excuse me. Even had, like, a little bit of that Toad voice when he was speaking. And I'm like, okay, I can get on board with this. So I'm just saying, I'm excited to see it. I can... I can understand that this is going to be a little bit of a, a growing and learning thing with people, but honestly, everyone getting mad at Chris Pratt over it, it's its so dumb and stupid. Like, he, he, that wasn't his choice. That was Nintendo. Going after him just proves how extremely ignorant people really are. If you don't want to support something, I, there's a very simple way to go about it. Don't give them your money. Don't give them your time. And it's like, <clears throat> when we constantly attack these people relentlessly because we don't agree with them or we don't, like, agree with their ways of life, it's like, what does that say about us as people that we cannot just, you know, find differences in these things and just still learn to, you know, respect and have some kind of care and consideration for one another but it's like this, it just elevated. Like some of the crap I was seeing on Twitter for about Chris Pratt as Mario, and it went far beyond the spectrum of just voiceover work. We're talking about general pure disdain and hatred. And I'm like, holy crap, this needs to be addressed. I think it's time we remind ourselves that this is being pulled from a video game and being made to entertain us. And I think we can lighten up a little bit and have some fun. What say you? You let me know. I think I'm going to enjoy myself. I'm going to go. <coughs> I'm going to wear my finest Nintendo uh, garb. I'm going to get myself a nice large soda, some popcorn. And I I'm going to sit in that theater and I'm going to be reminded of when I first got my Nintendo with its copy of Super Mario Bros. 3. And I'm going to be taken back to a time period where it was just me trying to save the Mushroom Kingdom, just pure nostalgia, and I'm sure I'm going to have a good time. And I'm sure there's going to be people who want to bitch about it the entire time. I can honestly say out of the two, I think I'm the one that's going to be living a little bit more uh, carefree and not, you know having this thing take up so much real estate in their brain.